are bloody lucky. And do you want to know why? Because in the Netherlands, we were able to set up a waste collection system already in a very early stage and with tiny waste buckets. But what was in those buckets is highly interesting. Just organic waste. What locally served as food for livestock and cattle. Things changed dramatically when the industry for plastic household products evolved. This period of growth was celebrated in Life magazine as throwaway living. With single-use plastic, the sky was the limit. Plastic packaging was promoted to consumers. You could even look through and see what you had purchased, a novelty. Plastic was seen as the miracle material of that moment, and it was. To be honest, it served us well, and our lives would not look the same without it. But we unintendedly created our own plastic environment, and the material has set many rules and standards for safety, hygiene and comfort. The worldwide production of plastic has been growing since the 1950s to an incredible 311 million tons in 2015. And the production for packaging material increased to 50% of total volume. But this was not without consequence. Plastic suddenly became a major part of our household waste, and this for ever shifted the way we handle garbage, changing from local to regional and even global processes. Because plastic is permanent and combined waste is very difficult to handle, we had no other option than to landfill the stuff. And later on, we even started burning, burning it to minimize land use. For decades, many countries have been exporting their plastic waste to China for recycling purposes. But now China has shut its doors. Why? Because our waste feedstock coming from our countries was far from consistent, and plastic recycling is already very complex. To give you an example, there are more than 5,000 plastic trade names with all their specific differences. Technically, they are probably all recyclable, but economically and practically, it's a burden. And there are more issues that make recycling even harder. Growing product, product complexity huge collection problems, accumulation of uh, additives and chemicals, and quality issues. Despite of the enormous power of the recycling industry, virgin plastic production keeps on growing. And there are two main drivers behind this growth. There's practical market value and very low production costs. But there's also a less obvious influencer who pushes this growth, and that's life cycle assessments. So what can we tell about this? According to the internet, life cycle assessments is a complex methodological tool to calculate the environmental footprint of a product. It uses about 18 criteria, it's widely used and accepted. And th something to remember, it was already stated in the very early development stage of the methodology that the use phase of a product is not important. Keep in mind. The real impact, according to this methodology, is at production, transportation and disposal. 
A producer has a lot of influence on this A side in his choice of material, energy use, water use, and reduction of greenhouse gases. But the disposal side is far from clear because it's for a producer almost impossible to influence the way a product will be disposed. And there are huge differences in waste handling per country. So when you're exporting your product to those countries, it will get even worse. Fact is, it's hard to tell where a plastic product eventually will end up and what will happen to it. A producer has little influence, but he should have, because there's also something like an uncontrolled environment, what is not mentioned in LCAs. We know that in all three phases, A, B, the use phase, and C, plastic leaks heavily into the natural environment, starting with raw material spill at the production phase, enormous forms of leakage at the use phase, and of course, leakage risk at the disposal phase. We use it, we lose it. But there's something else with life cycle assessments. We see an ongoing transition in supermarkets of metal, glass and paper packaging into plastic packaging. How come? Well, life cycle assessment tools are often used for product comparison. For instance, with this single-use plastic bag, to achieve the same low environmental impact, you have to reuse this paper brown bag 43 times. But if we only look at the front side, at material, energy, water and greenhouse gases, single-use plastics will always be the winner. So, we should ask ourselves, is this a fair comparison? No, it's totally not. Because plastic causes one of the biggest material emissions in our time. And it's not in life cycle assessments. How on earth will a producer be able to make a good material choice when the right criteria are missing? As long as this is the case, we have no other option than to rely on common sense. Because we see what is happening. We know there is a huge problem. And we have to take action. So let's take off these blinders and start looking at the risk of plastic leakage. The urge for this is even bigger when we know what we're heading for. A global plastic overload in 2050. Recycling is developing and is doing their best what they can, but they will never keep up the pace with the virgin plastic production numbers. Even in Europe, we see already the effects, there are more than 100,000 illegal dump sites. That's simply because we're not in control. So, when the plastic pollution problems already start at the roof of the world, this is in the heart of Kathmandu, Nepal, the rivers will find a way to get rid of it. These river plastics frequently wash ashore locally on beaches with devastating effects on the environment, but also on tourism. And even in Europe, we have great problems. This is a beautiful Meuse River by low tide. Unbelievable. Animals get entangled and suffer from the tremendous strength of plastic. 
cattle lived with a constant threat of plastic ingestion. This cow eventually starved to death with its belly full of plastic. There are many, many known casualties like this. Birds try to make the best of it. Eventually, a vast amount of all plastics end up in the oceans. Sea life suffers tremendously from this plastic plague coming from land. And scientists predict that in 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the oceans. To make this more clear, let's have a look at the Midway Islands. This is as far from urbanization as you can get. In the middle of the North Pacific, and in the middle of the North Pacific gyre, one of the seven main plastic garbage patches. And this is the national flag of the island group, and it shows its main inhabitants, the albatross. Although we know that more than 95% of all the plastic in the oceans eventually will sink to the ocean bottom. The concentration of floating plastic surrounding these islands is so high that these birds easily mistake plastic for food. The colony is threatened with extinction. The bottom line is that what was presented as a highly convenient and versatile material is now unrapidly unveiling its true character. Plastic is wrapping our whole living planet. Something else about plastic. Plastic products tend to fragmentize to microplastics over time. They can become so small that even plankton is able to consume them. In time, these microplastics attach to all sorts of dangerous chemicals from outdoor polluted seas. But when poisonous microplastics enter the food chain, we should wonder what it does for our health. Microplastics in general have our great concern. And there are many sources. Wear from car tires, fiber loss from clothes and textiles, and there's even a development of very persistent nanoplastics. We are concerned, because scientists now think there is a relation between daily plastics exposure and so-called modern diseases like fertility problems or uh, hormone disruptions. And that's why we started the Plastic Health Coalition, to make essential research possible. This is just one of our, of our campaigns and projects we run, and all with great ambition on awareness raising, source prevention, and data collection. We do whatever we can, but we really need a global change in mindset on every level. And therefore, to achieve this, we have to take plastic leakage seriously and integrate it as a fair part of environmental impact assessments. But also, we start reducing plastics on an absolute way. And therefore, we have to cut down on all single-use plastics wherever possible. Start reusing reusable and deposit systems on a broad scale. And make the system fair for alternative materials that already have a very high recycling rate. But is there also good news? <sighs> yes, there is. We see that plastic is becoming top of mind. And worldwide, there is becoming change on political level. Plastic bans and new legislation are being implemented. But there's also good Product news, like avoiding plastic packaging by lasering the information on the food product itself, or a sprayable natural substance that slows food decay. 
moldable, plastic-like material, but is even fully paper recyclable or home, uh, backyard compostable. And material made out of algae that is even edible. And finally, I will show you some technical solutions, but I rather will call them damage control solutions. Well, we probably all know Bojan Slat and his ocean cleanup, and his self-assigned immense task to clean up the top layer of the oceans. Pff, what a challenge! But we like to stay closer to the source, and there are loads of catching develop developments focusing on rivers. In my opinion, the one with the most, the most uh, perspective is the Great Bubble Barrier from three Dutch ambitious ladies. But we try to find catching developments for microplastics as well. And we work closely with Planet Care, who developed a great working washing machine filter that is called Catch. Compared to other countries, we are bloody lucky. But even in the Netherlands, we need common sense to turn this plastic tight. Because we have an obligation to the other countries as well, where our plastic leakage shows enormously. So, what can we do? Well, I could ask you to buy a reusable bag or a refillable bottle. But that's not what I'm here for. I want to ask you to use your consumer power and tell producers, retailers and policymakers your concern for the future and ask them to take plastic leakage seriously. They will listen because we are consumers. And as consumers, we are the biggest influencers on earth. Thank you.